Hey, this is Mike Cashew, and you're listening to the Brute Strength Podcast. This week's guests are Mitch and Garrett Holov. Garrett is a 27-year-old that was born with Down syndrome, and in this show, we tell his story of overcoming challenges and following his passion. Throughout the show, you'll hear him say the, the, the term D word because he doesn't like to use the term Down syndrome. He doesn't let it define him, and his life is much more than just being a kid with Down syndrome. I hope you find this as inspiring as I did. Enjoy the show. Hey, this is Mike Cashew, and you're listening to the Brute Strength Podcast. Mitch and Garrett, thank you guys so much for making some time to do this with me. Um, I've done over 100 shows now, and this is one of the... This is a, close to the most excited I've ever been for one. So thank you all for making this happen. Thanks for having us, Michael. Absolutely. So I want to I wanna start before, before MMA came into your guys' life. Mitch, can you give a little bit of background to the listeners? Uh, tell us what, what your family was, life was like um, and, and kind of what Garrett's life was like before finding MMA. And specifically, was he, was he happy before finding MMA? Um, oh, I can get carrots, the middle of three brothers. So I have three sons. Um, he's the middle son, uh, and Garrett's going to be 28 in October. His older brother's 31 and his younger brother's 22. So, and, and we lived in pretty much a typical household. My wife and I have been together, uh, since college. Um, so I think Garrett had a pretty typical life growing up and we strive to make it that way. Um, my wife and I are very militant on the inclusion end. So from mm-hmm. the moment that Garrett was born, once we got over the initial shock and as he started to grow up and we started to teach him how to do things, um, my kids were always involved in Little League and everything else and Garrett played and it was just, it was as typical as we could get. And we're very fortunate too because Garrett was born very healthy. So the challenges is he faced when he was born uh, were not medically. Um, we also live in a great community where all through school, he had his, he had his brothers and his friends from kindergarten, almost through high school. So I think that we're very fortunate in that way that, uh, we really had a little bit of village that helped, you know, help raise him. Um, so it was kind of, it was as typical as it could be. Um, I think that that's what we, we just strive for. Um, I think he was happy growing up. Were you happy growing up? Um, uh, I know it was a long time ago, but were you happy as a kid? Yeah. Um, a, a um, a one person, I mean, growing up, his name is Richard Provian. He, and, and knows that Richard Provian is a friend of his since mm-hmm. kindergarten. Um, it, it just, and it's great how small the world is. Richard joined the services and he's overseas and, they Skype and they talk and they're friends today. And um, see, we are brothers. You're, you're like brothers, yes. We like both going up the same neighborhood, but that's kind of like. Same neighborhood. Yeah, uh, that's kind of brothers. You like, consider Richard a brother? Yeah. So and, I, I think that's a good example of how he feels because he's still friends with people today that he went to high school with. Um, there's always issues. It's funny growing up until he started MMA, we really didn't have that many issues because it was a pretty typical lifestyle. There wasn't much that you could criticize or to stand out. He played, Mm -hmm. he played basketball at the JCC in the optimist league. That was his sport growing up. Um, and he played in a typical league league. It wasn't special Olympics or whatever. Um, a couple seasons, my dad and I actually coached him. So, I think it was really, you know, very typical upbringing um, as much as it could be. And how did MMA finally come into the picture? Is that something that you guys sought out or did it just fall into your lap? Um, uh, actually, it's my job. It's well, job. how did you get started on MMA? Um, Do you remember? I kind of know. It was a long time ago. It was, he, he was watching MMA. I, I boxed as a kid. Um, long time ago and quite, it, it, it's a silly story, but we're sitting in a bar and talking with my son had just grabbed, my oldest was home and we're talking about training. And, um, I, I said, you know, if you guys want, we can try the, the American top team that opened up in the neighborhood. Let's, you know, go try it. It'll give you a chance to punch me in the face. 
Um, that was kind nice. of my joke. Yeah, it was like, okay, let's go. Um, May. And he's the only one that showed up on Saturday morning when we woke up to go. <laughs> Love it. I don't take my punches right now. So. No, I can't take your punches right now. So it was just one of those things where you go and do a class and it was a positive experience and he really enjoyed it. He had been doing some training in the gym with me with me for um, about a year or so um, after he got done basketball and kind of aged out and he graduated high school. There was a big gap. Since I went to the, the vocational school. No, that uh, it was about, I was going to say, Marines. Oh, no, not the Marines. There was a big gap. And he did He did try to join the Marines. He did try yeah, to sign up did. in the service. He yeah, talked to the recruiter. Um, so in that gap, I started to take him to the gym because, you know, he kind of lost contact with some of his high school friends. And the stuff that he was doing in high school, everybody moves away. G's still at home. And that was probably the worst period, really, for all of us. And you talk about how MMA fell into his life, you know, everybody moved away to go to college or was going to college. She mm -hmm. went to vocational school. Um, no, athletics was that. limited in what he could do. And um, so we started just to train to get to train more together because he's, he started to put on weight, which was the, was a concern. And then we, that's kind of how we just fell into MMA was just a goof and a lark saying, hey, let's go try it. Um, he really loved it on the Saturday that we went. Um, he started just doing jujitsu in a gi. And the thing that we found very early on is um, it jujitsu is a, is a pattern when you learn the moves. It's very patterned and very countered. So teaching somebody step by step by step, he was able to catch on right away. He really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Um, um. A Bhavanada person that, that I was before. Well, that was a long time ago when you first started, so you were a lot. You're a lot better now. But right. A, a I change, but people doesn't stay the same. Yes, I know. P, you've changed since then. Yes. You got lost weight. Not a white belt anymore. Mm. A, I'm a purple belt, but I got the shirt, but I don't want the belt yet, but I'm going to get to the belt. When you get the belt, then you'll be a purple belt. Well, I'm kind of um, the shirt, but I don't want the belt yet. I know. You, you need one more stripe. Yes. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Got, so was it? Four stripes right now. Four stripes. So you're one, one stripe away. Yes. That's awesome. I, I, I've done... I've done a little bit of jujitsu and I got my ass beat by purple belts constantly. That's how you look. So, <laughs> that's how you yeah, that's it. That's right. That's you so was when you, when you guys found MMA, Garrett, was it, did you fall in love with it immediately or did you, um, did you, as you started to learn more, did you start to fall in love with it? Um, actually, um, a, Exactly what I am right now. No, when we first start, when we first started. I know, but think about the when we first started. Okay, did you like it the first Can day? Can you repeat that question? Yeah, absolutely. So when you first started that that first day, did you immediately fall in love with jujitsu, or did you start to create this passion and fall in love with it as time went on and you learned more? Actually, it's about the uh, passion. Gotcha. So the more you did it, the more you the more you fell in love with the sport. Um, actually, the sport found me. <laughs> sport found you. Hey. Yeah. Amen, man. Amen. What What changed for for your family after this, Mitch? Um. Well, really changed. It sounds like y'all were going through a, a, you know, you said the toughest time before that. It was a tough time for him. Yeah, I really think that that was the toughest time for. Yeah, him. that's my second. Dog. Yeah, it was a tough. It was a tough time for him those years, um, just because he was trying to find himself. I mean, just finding a job was an issue too. 
Um, as soon as they got one. Yeah, it was just interesting, too, because it was the time that the economy was down and he was going to vocational school. And it was like a year and a half of vocational school, no job. And he wanted to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so when he started MMA, it was just great because it was an activity. When he started jiu-jitsu, I should really say, it was just an activity that he and I did together. And it was something that he could go do. Um, what it did for him initially was um, brought him into another social environment that he could then re-engage with people socially. Coming out of high school, he kind of lost that. Um, everybody's off doing their thing. So if you've rolled with people before, um, it's a, it's a, it, you develop a community in the family. So yeah. I, think, I think that the jiu-jitsu just became a, the community. I was going to say... Um, a actor of my friends was gone. Um, a I just found a a glimpse on something. What after your friends were gone, you caught a glimpse of something. Yeah. What did you catch a glimpse of? Um, a, I'm not gonna say the D word. So the, the, uh, yeah, he was he 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 didn't want to say the D word. He was pretty down in the dumps. It was kind of tough. Um, actually, I went um journey around the world. Yeah, she stopped searching. He's searching. Um, that's all I'm saying. Okay. So yeah, it was. It, I think that um, it gave him friendships. You know, going to any gym. Mm-hmm. I think that that's something that we found. That's something that I know growing up playing sports. You know, it always gave us a place and always gave my kids a place. And going to the gym and doing jiu-jitsu gave him, you know, that sense of community again. Something to look forward to. Being closer to my, my, my old man here. <laughs> Being closer. You got to beat up on your old man? No, he said yeah. being closer to his old man. Plus, oh, nice. Plus, getting to beat up on me too. That's the same thing. That's the yeah. same thing. Uh, when I, um, actually, not can be on um, us being friends. Being friends, that's the best part. Um, so I think that that just kind of um, he always enjoyed it. I mean, going to the basketball was just. I think anybody that does CrossFit, Jiu Jitsu, whatever it is, when you have that passion that he talked about. It gave him that sense. Um, so that was the positive. It gave him, you know, the fitness angle of it, too. Um, so that was a, it became a positive impact on his life right away. And there's something unique about martial arts that and you already said this, there's, there's so much structure in it. And it's and it's taught in a way with the simplest moves being repeated thousands of times. Uh, it, it, it's something that just keeps your mind very stimulated, right? There's always room for growth in every single session. And and so that's why I think a, a lot of people fall in love with martial arts. Yes. And, and the research has shown, you know, with martial arts too, and, and, and um, especially people on the autism spectrum, again, we're getting some positive results on just doing some cardio kickboxing and focus mitts. And yeah, it's, it, it's really interesting what I found. Well, so 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 yes, it's 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 that that's that's been really good for him too because it allows that focus of learning. He's capable of learning. He doesn't. He never. After a while, he didn't need me to be there to help him learn. He was there yeah. and part of the class, which is the other cool thing too. I you know I don't train very much with him unless he's. I went to rock MMA um a a. Cook- they got great coaches like Miguel and Caesar and Coach Carl. Um, a great teammates and them uh, always got my back. A, a um, by this time, my, I got their back. Besides, I would take a bullet for them. Hey. Talks about his relationship with his coaches, Miguel and Caesar, mm-hmm. um, and he, you, do, you create those. But I mean, that's the again, martial arts lends into that. And he trains at a very small gym now for the last, I guess, two years. Five years. Well, you've been training for five years, but like the yeah. last 
two or three years, the gym that he trains at is is not a big gym. It's not a franchise. Um, uh, we, it's a fighter. It's 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 a fighters gym. I mean, there's a half. There's about a dozen fighters that train at um, that gym. So they're a real family. Hey, I was going to say it went now, but we clean out this big gym now. Um, as a big gym, um, that he, uh, he, they got lots of bigger space with the cage with the with the boxing bags. That point, um, a like I said, the train is my job, and besides. Is um no one else can, but but someone has to do it. Nobody else can. It's, it's your job is to train. Yes. Okay. Let's go back to the questions. One th- one thing I love most about martial arts is that it's it's about training the mind as much or more than it is about training the body. It teaches you discipline. It teaches you camaraderie and friendship. It teaches you to respect other people. Um, I've had some amazing times doing jujitsu in the little bit of time that I that I did, and I see the people that have done it for so long. They're they they're. they're they have a different kind of aura about them, right? A different energy. And it's something that I've always respected so much. Garrett, what, what is the one thing that you love about training the most? Um, a pair of training is like winning. One thing. One thing. Your most favorite thing in the whole world when you go to the gym. What's your favorite thing when you get there? Um, a... On uh, first and nice we use quick sparring that I like to do. <laughs> Sparring's Thursday nights. Nice, nice. So that's your favorite thing is sparring. Hey, um, like on what's the name we do wrestling and then we do kickboxing. And then the kickboxing we, we just work on pass technique, like on like 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 I'm doing like this, like one, two, three, zip, up, cut, wait. Up, so, but go back, to, go back to the question. So your one most favorite thing to do is Thursday night sparring? Yeah. Um, uh, a, um, okay, that's it. It's a good thing to do. Well, they got me the belt. Mm-hmm. Got the- that's, that's the most fun, right? Yeah. That's always the most fun. Yes. Yes. And right now, a yeah, I just want to like, change my body. Right. I just want to be like um. I just want to be like Archer Slim. Who? I want to be slim. Oh, like, you want to be slimmer? Yeah. You want to get back to your fighting weight? I just mm-hmm. wanna, uh, um. No, it's about being it's in my fun way. I just want to. Uh, she does not to be, not to be Jimmy no okay, more. Can we, let's go back to the questions. You ready? Yeah. So Garrett, when you, when you aren't training, how much do you think about training? <laughs> um, a, that's a good question. Um, a, a, I would say, um, as Hey, I just... When aren't you thinking about training is maybe the question. <laughs> hey, it's about the... Um, having... Relationships for, for our friends. Oh, you're going back to the... You're going back to the other questions about relationships with your friends? Yeah, exactly. Just, um... Thinking about training... It's going with the complex. Thinking about training is complex. Yeah. Hey, I hear you. In what, I hear you. In what way? Um, um, can you? Can no, I don't know. You're throwing out these big words, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Help me out here. I think you, you help you out here. So you, he, he, tra- he thinks about, I'll tell you the, I, he thinks about training then in the fact that as we're moving through our workouts, and we're going through the different portions and transitioning. He's shadow boxing. Mm-hmm. 
And what I do have something to do with uh, on a on a Saturday because Sunday is there at work with uh, with uh, I do that much every time now. You do a lot of yeah. So he thinks about training. I think twenty. 20 hours out of the day, even when he's sleeping. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like one of the most important pieces of that is the, is the friendships that you've made through that. And you're thinking, and you're thinking about those guys, your, your brothers, as you call them all throughout the day. Um, true, right? That's a big possibility. A day is true. (laughs) Big possibility. Gotcha. So I, I want to talk about your 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 fights. The the way that uh, Matt and I found out about you guys is we saw the the video that ESPN did several years ago of the first exhibition fight that you had. Since then, you've had three sanction fights. What it, throughout all of that, uh, what are you most proud of? Um, right now, well, I'm not in the belt. It is a big friend, a guy, like in his, in his sick, him out. And then, and then afterwards, I just got the bell. A, um, my coaches. So you're proudest about winning the belt? A. Is that what you're proudest about? A, I just wanted to make my dad cry. You just didn't want to make him cry? No, 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 um, a, no. I said I want to make him cry. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it sounds like you might have done that. After the first, yeah. a, after the first one, yes. Uh, by the time the third one, it was more. It was more business. Um, I think that we were feeling business has to uh, need to be um taken and, care of. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Business had to be taken care of. Yep. It, it was just within the three fights, um, winning the first one and just being the first adaptive fighters out there doing it. So I don't think David, Stefan, his opponent, or G could have lost in that original fight because they were real right. broke barriers. Um, My the, dad didn't. Let, let me finish. So the second, the second fight between them was was here in Florida. Uh, and and I don't think G had the energy level to compete with David again. Um, it was it, so G ended up losing by decision, um, and I think that haunted him for a little while. So then, with the third fight, it really became about all business about winning the fight because, it, and you've competed several times in the game, so I think the first time you're there, you get excited, you know. Uh, the first time I walked into a, a college football stadium, I was excited. The second time I was ready to play. And mm-hmm. I, by the third fight, he was definitely focused on and knowing that it was for an official belt and sanctioned fight. Um, I, I think that, that that really allowed him to focus on the fight. Uh, I love it, man. Go ahead. A, um, by the third fight, a... a I just follow a little game plan. I did take take um to take a guy out wow. as a process. You, you follow the whole game plan, which was awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you went back to that before, which is really kind of cool about with martial arts. It's you know, you you can you can give that piece by piece um, instruction, um, but also. I think one of the things that his coaches and I are the proudest with with this last fight was his what we call the fighter IQ. Um, we went we rehearsed this fight over and over again, kind of the way it was supposed to go. I think every fighter knows in some way that how he wants to fight the fight. So that's what you do. You kind of rehearse it. And with G, it's very much a rehearsal. But the interesting thing was seeing him change so fast in that 70 seconds from going to one strategy, changing right in the middle with the kick um, and changing it up. Yes, Cowboy, so one and kick. And then afterwards, I did this John Jones move. It's got the same thing, guillotine choke. I was going to uh, 
I didn't like grow up on the floor and decided not to. Decided not to. You went with the standing guillotine. I was going to just hold it there and just drop them, but a one thing, not a, a. I don't want to put them in a hospital. So uh, uh, I wish I did. You wish you did. Um. Hey, after I want to fight, hey, I make him retired. You make him retired. <laughs> Permanently. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and yeah, just it, it's it, and the whole thing, too, with any athlete. But to see the growth over the last three years in the games between the three fights is was really, I think, for all his coaches and for us is really cool. I just care about that. So. About getting better. Um, actually, it's better winning the fight is important to my training camp. Winning the fight's important to your training camp? Yeah. Do you, do you win the fight? You like winning the fights also for your friends and your, your gym, too. That's important to you? Yes, because they're like, um, a, as my coach Miguel is a champion, is, but he has a belt, and my second, um, Teammate is called Hector, but we call Chuck Show as well. A, I think, we all champions group of fighters. So a lot, of, a lot of the guys, he's fortunate enough to train with a pretty good group, and mm-hmm. um, so a lot of the guys have a belt, and just you know, he he can be part of that party, which is kind of special. So Mitch, to see your boy go from one of the most challenging kind of time periods in his life to finding MMA to having this almost obsession, this positive obsession and passion for this sport. What's that been like for you? And what does that feel like for you? Uh, it's been a great journey. I mean, it's been a crazy ride and I get excited over here. I'm a parent and I'm a coach. So I, I get to, I get double pleasure out of it. Um, I enjoy seeing what he does um, like I do with all my boys. Um, so, and it's been just a great journey. I mean, it, the last five years has been just a crazy journey. I mean, from fighting, from going to court to fighting for his right to fight, getting a fight, training for three fights, winning a belt, um, you know, competing in CrossFit, meeting all kinds of great people like yourselves and meeting people from USC. I just, to me, I just, I've been lucky to be a passenger on his ride. Um, <laughs> you know, it's right. been a lot of it. That part's been fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and to get to see him grow too. Um, and to get the other thing that I will tell you, I think that one thing that I really enjoy more than anything else is I like to see the impact that he has on other people. I, there's nothing, nothing better for me to stand in the doorway or look through the window as he goes into a room by himself and is introducing himself to maybe UFC, he'll go into a locker room and introduce himself to all the fighters there. Mm -hmm. And I love to see the reaction of other people and the way it's just dealt with. And, Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not. But the one thing that I found over and over again is that G handles it very, very well. Right. Um, and I just I, I really enjoy that because for me, I get to I get to see I, I, I know the impact that he's had on me as a person. Um, and I see it here. And you still do. And mm-hmm. the joy for me is to get to see how he impacts other people, how um, people can be inspired, you know, when they meet him and they find out his uh, story. It, it, it is crazy. It makes me very proud to see that. It makes me very proud as a father when somebody else smiles, when he puts a smile on somebody else's face or makes somebody else do 10 more reps because he's in the gym pushing them. That's really that's the best part about this whole thing. So what? Um, so obviously it's it's so important to for to you to ensure that Garrett has the best life experience, the widest range of possibilities in his life. But why is it also important for you to to? Get for for Garrett's story to reach others. Um, because honestly, Garrett's twenty, going to be twenty seven. Twenty seven, going to be. 20, hey, I'm twenty seven, man. 
day and age. <laughs> so you guys nice. Are in- yeah, A, B. I can be 28 by the second to October. October 11th. And I want to say, but A, does it really is coming after September. That's right. Okay. So your birthday's coming soon. Um, Getting closer, so. I'm sorry. Go, repeat the question one more time. Why is it so important that uh, yeah. Garrett's story reach others? Because um, if you would have asked me when Garrett was born, um, the stories that I was told and, and, and the future that we were told that we were in store for wasn't very positive. Mm-hmm. OK, um, when Garrett was born, adoption was something that nurses talked about with us. It was, it was common 27 years ago if you had a kid with Down syndrome that you considered giving them up for adoption. Mm-hmm. And the, the one thing that um, I feel very strongly about is, is that is that it's like with any other kid. A kid is born and you don't know what it's going to grow up to be. And we're ne- nobody's perfect. So d- discarding any life is wrong. Um, but more importantly, by telling Garrett's story, I think that we let everybody know just to give somebody an opportunity. Give them an opportunity to follow their passion and you will be amazed of what happens. You know, and that's the thing that I've learned from Garrett and, and really from all my boys. I have an attorney and an artist. And the one theme that I think that I we have for um, a powerful attorney is that attorney. is is that we just let them follow their passion, and then you see what happens after mm-hmm. that. You know, um, and with G, it's just been been even more amazing because there's been a lot of obstacles, and those tough times make the victory that much better. And you just need to take other tell other parents. You see, um, you know, you see a six year old kid, and I, I want I want the parent to know that there's no limitations. Um, the other side of that too, the other reason I like to get the story out as a parent, because this is something that I talk about with other parents is you have to be willing to take risk as a parent of a special needs child. It's very difficult. It's difficult as a parent to take risk. I don't want my kid to cross the street. I don't want them to ride the bus. Mm -hmm. Um, but we need to let our kids take a lot of risk Mm -hmm. because that's the only way. Um, they're going to get better. And I see that in the microcosm of training. You know, my wife gets very nervous if he does a headstand mm-hmm. or, or, or handstand push up. She's very nervous. That's a that's a risk to her. But it's a real challenge and he can do it. Uh, and he's done it. And, and thanks to her on your face. I can do it, crazy. Yeah. Bad. <laughs> she, yes, that's your mom. That's what moms do. So. That's one other thing that um, I try to turn the MMA into a positive. When they look at me, you talked about the negative feedback. I always say, look, I have to let him follow his passion and look what happens when you do. Only good stuff's going to happen. Um, um, so I think that's really that's really important why we get get the story out, because at this point, um, Garrett's achieved a lot personally. So now it's really, really important to us and to me that we start giving back. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do our class on Sundays and we train uh, other adaptive athletes and other kids. Um, It's so damn inspiring, man. And what you already started to share about the same thing that's important for Garrett is important for your other sons. And this is what you're talking about is what I preach to everyone, right? Find what you're passionate about and make damn sure that you are, you're taking advantage of that in some aspect of your life, right? You're, you're moving towards in that you're moving in the direction of your passion in some aspect of your life and people roll over and give themselves excuses for, for much less than what you guys have gone through much less. So it's very inspiring. I appreciate that. Um, may I say something? Hey, Nick, on this past year, um, a I believe I had a second dog, but he died from a. Um, we're gonna th- let's we're gonna share the story about your dog right now. Um, from a um, he died from a. 
a heart attack, but um, a he found her in a deep end in a pool. Damn. Yeah. Now and and that's why this. And I, that's and terrible. I him. She was old. She was old, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, she had a. I think what happened is she had a heart attack and probably fell into the pool after she had a heart attack. Wow. And I, um, let's, there, let's, my door was closed. I know I you're okay. I say, I say, um, as a shampoo dog. I'm sorry. Yeah, and that was two years ago. And yeah, think, things stick with G very much. Mm-hmm. Certain experiences we, we relive over and over mm-hmm. again. Um, but they're memories. They're memories. Well, guys, I I, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, is there anything else you want to leave the listeners with um, at all? And anyone that's maybe sitting on the fence of of they want to take a risk, but they're not. Anything that you would leave them with? Um, I would say just follow all you passion and that they do. Well, a go to the gym, just clean, just work out, and they eat properly. I think that. Amen, man. Amen. That, that's good stuff. Um, I agree with what G said, so we'll ditto that. that what you said is everybody just out there, follow your passion no matter what it is. Have the courage to follow your passion. Mm-hmm. Um. And the other thing, too, is just uh, if you're interested in what we do or find out more about G's story, you can go to our website at uh, garrettsfight.org. Garrettsfight, G-A-R-R-E-T-T-S. Okay. So you can find out more about his story and everything that we do down here with the Adaptive Athletes. Um, and we also want to thank you guys, everybody at Brute. For supporting us, supporting G, um, really excited about the training program too. So we're um, excited about that. I want to say thank you for the coaches; they're great. And I want to ask them, um, can you please tell me change this body? Change this body. Yeah. We're good. We're gonna get to a muscle up. That's the goal, right? Yes. Muscle up a lot of Palooza. Um, nice. A lot of Palooza is like, too far away from there. That's perfect. It gives you time to do it. Yes. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you all so much. I really appreciate the time. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, Michael.